Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Metastellar YouTube channel. My name is Maria Korolov, and I'm the editor here at Metastellar. And today, the top free best-selling speculative fiction book on Amazon is a space opera with over 3,000 positive reviews. But before we get to that, we've got nine other books to talk about. You see, every single Friday, the team here at Metastellar reads the first few chapters of every book on Amazon's top 10 list. Today, I was helped out by reviews editor, Amira Lutfi, assistant fiction editor, Terrence Smith. Hey, Terrence. Um, and community members, Lou Lyons, Tim McHugh, Sophie Gorgians, and Toby Patton. And Toby is here with us today. So this is Toby's first day here with us on Free Friday. And Terrence- Get out while you still can. <laughs> And Terrence, of course, is a regular visitor. Uh, Terrence is our assistant fiction editor, and he writes about video games for Game Rant. Uh, oh, and he's um, he has a novel that we're going to be serializing that he's in the process of finishing up the final edits on. So, uh, yay, Terrence. All right. So, um, uh, the link to the article where we review all these books in length is in the description box below. And uh, so we're going to try to just summarize the reviews so we can get through it a little bit quicker. Um, for those who are new, Metastellar is an online magazine of speculative fiction. All the content is always free to our readers. We publish original short fiction, reprints, excerpts, essays, and lots and lots of book reviews. We're able to do this thanks to the generosity of our Patreon supporters. Thanks, guys. And our second anthology is now out. Uh, let me put that up here on the screen so you can see it a little bit bigger. Um, here we go. Um, there it is. Uh, and our first anthology is also still available. And I'm going to have the links to that in the description box below as well. All right. So, oh, um, and I have a little bit of self-promo thing. Uh, my book, The Lost King of Prim, is free today on Amazon. And last I checked, it was number 13 on the humorous sci-fi bestseller list. All right, so uh, you can pick up a copy of that. All right, so let's get into this. Book number 10 is, um, where is it? Here it is, Twisted by Anne Gray, the fourth of 11 books in the paranormal romance series, Shifter Days, Vampire Nights, and Demons in Between. All the books in the series are standalone stories. It can be read in any order. The other books in the series are two to five dollars each, and they are not in Kindle Unlimited. So Kindle, Kindle Unlimited is where you pay twelve bucks a month and you read all the books you want, like the Netflix for books. Um, if you read more than a couple of books a month, it's a really good deal. Uh, this is the author's first time on our free Friday list. So I read this book. I am not the target audience because I don't like paranormal romance. I'd rather the woman just stab people, stab her enemies instead of like turning them into lovers. Just kill them. Get it over with. Move on with your life. Um, but uh, since I'm stuck with this book, I'm going to I'm going to give it a fair shake. So the book begins with trigger warnings. So uh, keep in mind that. It's got trigger warnings for mental and physical abuse, sexual assault, violence, and murder. All right. So it starts out with Julia, who wants to send a birthday, birthday card to her cousin. And she hunts around in Desmond's office to find an envelope. But she finds some documents that could get her killed. And it kind of freaks her out. And then before she could like tidy everything away and get out of there... Desmond comes in and catches her. He came back from work early. He's angry and Julia thinks that he's going to beat her because he's beaten her before. And um, so he doesn't beat her this time, but she's got bruises that she's putting makeup over. It's So it's a little disturbing and creepy. Um, so then she puts on this makeup. She goes out to meet a friend. Her friend knows that something bad is going on. And um, she's a witch and she casts revenge spells on people, usually adulterers and bullies. And she gives Julia a spell to help protect her. And then uh, she goes back home and we find out that Desmond is a blood servant to a vampire. And both he and the vampire are kind of nasty criminals. And she's trapped in this relationship 
She's trapped in the job. She works for both of them as an accountant. It's she. It creeps me out. I don't like being creeped out. So, but if you are the kind of person who enjoys creepy things, um, that in these kind of suspenseful situations, you might enjoy this book. It is extremely readable. And I did like her friend, the witch, very much. And I wish she would take the witch's advice. All right. Next, we have Sister Witches by Felicia Jedlicka, the first of three books in the paranormal urban fantasy series, Sister Witches. The other books are three to four dollars each, and they are not in Kindle Unlimited. And this is also the first time the author has been on our free Friday list. And uh, Toby Patton read this one for us. Toby, what did you think of this book? So um, I, I like with uh, the previous one, I don't think that this was necessarily uh, in my wheelhouse, but um, for a, a couple of reasons, it's pretty heavy on the witchcraft rituals. It's magical realism. Um, it's got some like exorcism stuff that um, has been traditionally kind of outside my genre of choice. Um, it's a pretty heavy book. It definitely deserves a content warning for suicide and self-harm. Um, it's because it, it starts in the present day in the novel. Um, Henny, the main character's mother, has passed away three years prior in a pretty brutal car crash that's left her really angry and lashing out at the world. Um, she's going to school at this repurposed nunnery um, and has been called into Sister Aggie's office to, to talk through why she got in a fight with a student. Um, Sister Aggie validates her emotions really well, but then kind of flips the table on her and um, makes this kind of trance-like declaration that Henny's about to lose her father as well to cancer. Um, Henny has to be dragged out of the office and is screaming at Sister Aggie, and it's a very just dramatic moment. Um, the book then jumps to three years later, and her father has died of cancer. Henny's on the doorstep of suicide, is hearing these really vicious voices that are urging her to, to take her own life, to draw her own blood. It's this really dark moment, and she's pretty much there, except she still wants to get revenge on Sister Aggie, who she blames for the whole thing. Um, so she goes back to the church, and she finds all the nuns gathered in a classroom, kneeling in a circle, chanting their prayers. Um, she jumps in the middle, is about to stab Sister Aggie when she's frozen in this like undeniably magical moment. It's the first moment that like can be described as that in the book. And in this kind of moment of surprise and awe for her, Sister Aggie basically kind of throws down the gauntlet and tells her, um, you have, you, right now you're at an impasse. You can either, you're going to either kill yourself, you're going to kill me, or you can choose to join our witch's coven. Um, Henny's then launched into this double life, appearing to the outside world. She's subscribing to the coven's kind of conservative values of poverty, chastity, and obedience. While, of course, in secret, she's working with the sisters to hunt down and exercise the evils of the world. Um, like I said, if you're into witchcraft, if you're into rituals, exorcisms, totally for you, just not necessarily my cup of tea. All right. Okay, next we have book number eight on our list, A Witch Unexpected by Debbie Cassidy, the first of five books in the, the 13th Sign a Paranormal Romantic Fantasy series. The other books are $5 each, but they're all in Kindle Unlimited. And this author has appeared numerous times on our free Friday list. Uh, so Terrence read this for us. Terrence, uh, what did you think? Well, I certainly didn't hate it. I thought uh, it started to get pretty tense with some of the actions that I, as I read along. The premise of the book is that the protagonist is a witch who is a culpa, which is a thought form, which is a concept that a couple of the episodes of the X-Files have touched upon as well. She was created by her best friend, who was going to allow herself to get bonded to this like sex hungry ghost named Jasper. And so she wound up bonding with her and with him instead so that her friend didn't have to and basically, uh, 
this Jasper character ends up making things really difficult for her. He's always tagging along when she's going out on dates. She has to wear this amulet around her neck to ward off his sexual advances. And for anyone who loves steamy adversarial romances with toxic males and the story is definitely going to be up your alley. Personally, it's not really my kind of thing. So this is a pass for me. All right. Oh, I'm gonna, let me make that a little oh. bit bigger so you guys can see that. Oh, yeah. One other thing. Uh, she uh, also has to keep a piece between three packs of werewolves and contain an ancient evil because, of course, there are werewolves in the story. Um, I actually started reading this book as well Um, because I didn't know if anybody else was going to take it and, it and it sounded good. And I have to say, even though I'm not a fan of the romance angle, um, especially of the enemy, the romance with the enemy, I'm like, kill that demon, you know, move on with your life. But yeah, just kill the thing. I just kill no, it. Not kill, kill it. it, just no, uh, like, tell oh, it to bugger off. You're a creepy witch with all these weird powers and you've got all these friends with tons of other weird powers. Kill the guy, move on with your life. But but aside from that, I did have to say I enjoyed the action um and she had some uh she had a rescue to do right in the beginning of the book and i really really enjoyed it i really like this writing style and um i i like this book anyway let's move on to number seven which is a low country by morgan uh shank the first of two books in the low count country trilogy a dark fantasy series the second book is $3, but it is in Kindle Unlimited. The third book hasn't been released yet. And this is the first time this author has been on our free Friday list. So um, sorry if my shoulder keeps disappearing. I don't have my green screen up because it's too hot. And uh, my camera is doing really weird things to my jacket. Anyway, so uh, the book is set in the land of Banania. But not banania, but banania, B E. Um, and it's kind of a fantasy western. So, Charla is a young woman who recently arrived in a small town called Opec. She's running from her past and she's buried a large cache of blood money in the desert. And uh, she's uh, at a dance with her lover, Ren, when there's a sudden brutal attack from the claw people who are in an indigenous desert-dwelling tribe who use bone axes and have control of the weather. So they maim and slaughter many people and kidnap many more, including her lover, Ren. She's heartbroken and furious. She decides to go dig up her blood money and hire a bunch of warriors to attack the tribe and get Ren back. And then we switch to the point of view of, of the leader of the tribe that led the attack. And the reason why he's attacking this village is because it was their land originally, and these guys took it, and he wants to get it back. And he's he has a mystical shaman working for him who uses human sacrifice to power his magic. And so while these people's goals are kind of sympathetic, the way they carry them out is pretty reprehensible, says Sophie Gorjans, uh, who read this for us. Um, so she was kind of, um, checked out of this book at this point, uh, when the book started introducing yet another point of view character, um, a watchman of this country who's got a history of fighting, um, the claw people. Uh, so she says that the characters weren't sympathetic, um, and the, they have really vague problems that weren't getting her invested in it 
And she said there were a lot of kind of unfortunate stereotypes that seem to be tossed around quite a bit because it is set up kind of like a Western. So, um, so she's not going to be reading it. And uh, it doesn't sound like the kind of book I would be trying out either. Um, but if you like a fantasy Western kind of setup and can get beyond having multiple points of view and some disturbing aspects of the whole indigenous people thing, then check it out. It's free. All right. Next, we have Time of Death by Nathan Van Koops, the first of four books in Paradox P.I., a sci-fi time travel mystery series. The other books are five dollars each, but they're all in Kindle Unlimited. And this is the time third, travel. This is the third time this book has been on our free Friday list. So people love this. And I like this book from the first line. So it has a kind of film noir private eye feel about it. So in the present day, Jason Travers, a private eye, has an AI assistant named Waldo and lots of cool gadgets. And um, he's a time traveler. And a, a wealthy, beautiful woman comes in and hires him to prove that her husband didn't kill himself. He can't stop the death because it already happened, but he can go back in time and get the real story. So I love this book. The Travers, the main character, is cynical and funny. He knows his job. He doesn't agonize over it. So I totally plan to finish this book when I first reviewed it. But I, for the life of me, I cannot remember whether I finished it or not. It's it it was it's been a while ago. All right, next we have, um, there we go, Power Witch. No, the Power Within by Nicole Taylor. It's the first of four books in an Australian supernatural Goldfields urban fantasy series. The other books are five dollars each, and they're not in Kindle Unlimited. And this author has been on our list multiple times. Um, including this past June when we reviewed her book, Outback Spirit, part of another series called Australian Supernatural Origins, which kind of sounds like they're set in the same universe. McHugh, uh, Tim McHugh read this for us, and he says that this book is about the story of a supernatural war between witches and vampires set in modern day. She's a witch. A witch, <laughs> as I say. Um, she weighs more than so a duck. Therefore, she is a witch. Yeah, so Tim says he's not a fan of vampires, but he does love magic. So he was looking forward to this book. And the story starts with Hannah, who's a middle-aged witch, and she's deeply involved with a war against the vampires. She's casting a spell on her in her cabin. Um, and uh there's a there's a battle and she doesn't come out well. So then we we switch to the point of view of her niece Holly who's got a boring corporate job and doesn't know anything about her magical heritage, aside from like these visions that she occasionally has or some flashes. And then she gets a call that her aunt passed away from a heart attack and left her everything. And so she quits her terrible job and goes to this town and um, to accept her inheritance. She's getting her bearings in town, but the whole time she's getting settled in, the vampires are watching her. They're trying to figure out who she is and how powerful she is, and they're planning to pounce on her. And she's about to get caught in the middle of this vampire witch war. So um, Tib says the writing is very good. The war between the vampires and witches is done well. Um he had some minor problems with the di dialogue and the corny banter between the vampires. Um, but, he, but he says that the description and tension is beautifully done. And he likes this book. And he thinks that if you like this genre, you like this book too. Next, we have Psy by Cara Bristol, the third of six books in the Alien Castaways sci-fi romance series as you can probably tell by the book cover with a naked guy on, on it. Yeah, the books in... is not here. Yeah, yeah. We one of our one of our team members loves these books and we miss her. Yeah, she should she, she should be back on this. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can dig her up. Uh I mean lure her back in. She's still alive. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so... she Maria, you see she uses her witch powers to 
manipulate uh, people into doing this uh, kind of stuff with her. Yeah, doing book reviews. That's me. Witch power of manipulation. That's what I would use it for. Totally. All right. So, um, so the author has been on this list before, and um, so I'm I'm so I read this one. I am not the target audience for this book. I guess I don't have to explain that. Um, so Cassie is mute, and she's 23, and uh, she's working her first job um, in an antique shop, and she can can hear fine. But in order to communicate, she writes notes on a piece of paper. And her mother's overprotective and was worried that she wasn't going to be able to handle a job. But she's been in this shop for three months now, and she's doing fine. And there's also some hints that her mother may have had a hand in driving off all her ex-boyfriends, all her past boyfriends. Just like she's really overprotective. So one day, a handsome stranger comes into the shop. And she loses herself in his eyes. And um, so his name is Psy, P-S-Y, like on the cover, because he's a he's a psychic. He's telepathic. He can read her mind. And he was pulled to the shop by her emotions, her loneliness, called to him. And he's a refugee who fled his home planet after it was destroyed and their ship crashed on Earth. So he goes in there, he chats her up. There's a little bit of back and forth where she writes her answers in her notebook and he asks her out. She says yes. And then he tells her he's an alien. She doesn't believe him. And uh, then he touches her head and she sees this vision of their ship leaving their planet and going to Earth and all that. And so now she believes him. So the book is cute. Um, and I do like Cassie, but I'm four chapters in and it doesn't look she's going to stab anybody. So I don't think I'm going to keep going with this, but it is extremely readable. So if you're looking for a cozy sci-fi romance, I think you like the story. Okay, next we have a book that, speaking of Amira, that Amira read. Um, but she read this for us um, back when this book was on our free Friday list the first time which was in September of 2021. So this is The the Fire Prophecy by Megan Linsky, the first of six books in the Hidden Legends Academy of Magical Creatures series of romantic young adult urban fantasy. The other books are $8 each, and they are not in Kindle Unlimited. So Mira says that the book starts out with a character who's got a rare disease in the book, um, and it's set in a magical school. So Liam comes from a magical world with dragons and elemental magic, and he's angry, he's got water magic, but isn't particularly interested in it. Um, and then, so that's the prologue, uh, so something happened to him and he's changed, and we don't know what, There's a, it's very mysterious. Um, then we start out with Amelia and Sophia, who are sisters. Amelia just graduated college and she got a job on a cruise ship and Sophia is about to start college, but she doesn't know what she wants to major in. They're out hiking and it's getting a little dark and suddenly Amelia gets spooked and grabs Sophia and run for the car and doesn't explain anything. Then Sophia gets out of the car and yells to somebody named Naomi, who's a giant cat. It attacks Amelia. Sophia fights it. A burst of fire shoots out of Sophia. They both ran back in the car. And that's how we find out Sophia has fire magic. And Amelia tells Sophia that the parents always said that she was adopted and human because the rest of the family has water magic. And then um, we're at the magic school and we're in a point of view of Liam who's walking around and he meets the Dean who has a giant dragon familiar and turns out that the giant cat Naomi is the familiar of one of the school's deans. So apparently the older sister has went to the school, upset this Dean and maybe isn't going to go work on a cruise ship after all. Um, so, um, so um, Amira says that the viewpoint character switches between Sophia and Liam. So she's guessing they're going to fall in love. 
And there's a prophecy about a powerful fire witch who's been hidden and Liam's job is to find her. And uh, which might explain why there's been so much secrecy in Sophia's family. So Amira says she can see why other people like the book. It's cute. And she says it has a lot, a lot of elements that remind her of the Harry Potter story. Is this one of those chosen one type of stories? Probably if she's the fated fire witch. Yeah. Okay, is she supposed to destroy the Sith and bring balance to the <laughs> Force? Because uh, that uh, happened once and it didn't turn out all that well. I like, doubt spoiler. it. It's a paranormal romance. <laughs> all right, next we have The Curse Bound Thief by Megan O'Russell. Let me make that a little bigger for you guys. Uh, here we go. Uh, this is the first of three books in a fracture pact a young adult urban fantasy series. The second book is six bucks and is not in Kindle Unlimited. And the third book will be released in September and is available for pre-order. It's the author's first time on our list. And Lou Lyons read this for us. And she says she was hooked right away from the beginning. She says the writer wastes no time in diving straight into the action. It starts out with Jarek, who's working on a computer in a library. Um, there's pictures of his family on a mantle, so I, I'm guessing it's a library in his house. And he's on the computer talking to his friend, Ari, and they're discussing a heist. Uh, and Jarek talks about going on a journey. So there's a sense of danger and adventure. And um, so Lou, Lou says that she really appreciates that. So there isn't that much information about the setting and the, and the world. But there's more focus on the interaction between these characters and that sense of imp impending danger and action. Um, then uh, Derek, uh, Jarek straightens out the pictures on a mantle, hides away some file folders and arranges other file folders. Um, and there's a little bit more foreshadowing about things that might happen and go wrong. And then Jarek blows up a car. So Lou says that she's interested in seeing where the book will go. And she's interested in how it started. It pulled her in. And um, she says she will be continuing to read the book. And she's recommending to anybody who wants an action-packed story. All right. Uh, before we go on to book number one on our list, I want to thank our Patreon supporters Maria LeClaire, Humphrey Price, Mary Stoll, Alexander Korolev, Avery Parks, Terrence Smith, Brad Center, David Perlmutter, Melody Friedenthal, Anastasia Korolev, and Amira Lutfi. Thanks, guys. We love you. Um, your Patreon donations help pay for all the original fiction that we published here at Metastellar. None of it goes to overhead because we're all volunteers. Okay, so um, book number one on our list is It Ain't Over by Robert Kearns. The first of four books in the Cole and Sprex space opera series. The other books in this series are four to five dollars each, and they're not on Kindle Unlimited. And this is the book that had over three thousand five star reviews on Amazon. So people love this book, and Toby Patton read this for us. So, um, Toby, what did you think of the book? I think it makes sense that it had three thousand five star reviews um, because I, I I was totally hooked. Um, this is space opera this is action-packed sci-fi um this is headstrong rule-breaking you know shoot from the hip protagonist um pretty much at its best through the first three chapters um captain cole is and his crew are on a manhunt for draketh lindrick across the galaxy um they've been coming up dry for months and months and then finally um lindrick and his armada appear out of the nearby space gate and demand uh cole turn over some of his crew um it, which includes the uh, the ship's first officer. Um, Cole is stuck at this uh, at this position, uh, spot now, where the um, the SDF command, who is basically Cole's superiors, wants Lindrick um, captured because he attempted a coup. Um, but for Cole, it's a, it's a way way more personal. Um, Cole, when he was thirteen, had to watch uh, Lindrick uh, massacre his home planet and his family from the safety of an asteroid belt. He was the only survivor, and um, Pretty unsurprisingly, he ignores the the heatings of the SDF command and just goes goes right into battle mode. Um, the second chapter is pretty much an entire epic space battle. 
Um, it's all led by Cole. He's got to step into a leadership position that he kind of has been hesitant to uh, up until this point, but the, the stakes are high. He's finally got a chance at Lindrick um, and he, and it works out. He succeeds. Um, he, he Lindrick is captured. A third of his fleet is damaged or destroyed. And the, the whole Armada crew is left basically begging to join Captain Cole's fleet. Um, so the end of the third chapter, we it's it's super fast paced. We're basically left with he's he's captured his nemesis. He has to make the decision of of what to do with Lindrick, what to do with the crew, what to do with the ships, um, and sort of how he's gonna continue to fill that leadership role. Um, it's interesting because it was a, a very clean ending to the to where I stopped reading. But um, my bet is they don't have Lindrick for long. Um, he's gonna butt heads a bunch more with the SDF command, um, and he's a really lovable character. So it, it's definitely gone on my list. All right, so there you go. Uh, those were the top 10 books on today's Amazon sci-fi and fantasy list. Get them right away. They do not stay free for long. Authors and publishers make their first book in a series free in order to get people interested and invested in the rest of the series. Um, and these are all always very short-term promotions. Um, so sometimes it's supposed to go into the end of the day, but sometimes for some reason it ends early. So definitely grab them. Um, if you don't want to miss any of these um, free Friday lists, subscribe to our newsletter. The link is below. It goes out every day at 5 p.m. So uh, you'll get your weekend reading. Or you can also subscribe to this YouTube channel and watch these videos. We're looking forward to seeing you again next Friday. And thanks, Toby, for joining us today. And thank you, as always, Terrence, for coming. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Live long and prosper.